Hi everybody, I'm Bill Sanders and this is Watch Art Sci, the Art and Science of Watts Collection. Uh, today what I'd like to do is to uh, talk about the entry-level watches for Blanc Pond. And as we did last week when we talked about Breguet, I talked about entry levels at two different places. One is the sports level and the other level is the uh, dress watch level. And so today we're going to talk about both of those. But first, what I want to do, I want to talk about the watch of the week. And this week's watch is a Jaja Lacoutre uh, Reverso Tribute Calendar. And uh, it's owned by uh, uh, Rudy Dobson. He was nice enough to uh, get these pictures. And whenever you have a reversal, you always have, <laughs> have to have two pictures. Not always, but usually. Uh, and this one has a dual time, uh, it has a night and day, it has a moon phase, uh, the Clou de Paris Gilloche, it's 18 karat gold, and uh, I think it's really a neat watch. I mean, it's like getting two very different looking watches, and so it's a neat watch to have. And so anyway, uh, Rudy, thank you very much for uh, letting us... Uh, take a look at this this really interesting watch it's one i haven't quite exactly seen one just like this one and it's and it's worth looking at okay let's take a look at blanc pond and the what we're doing now we're going to start with a dress watch and the reason we're starting with a dress watch it's actually less expensive than the sports watch. Usually it's the other way around. Sports watches are always the entry level, but uh, with Blanc Pond, it's a really neat watch uh, that's a dress watch. And this is a Villeray Ultra Plate. Ultra Plate refers to extra thin. I have on my uh, extra thin. This is also a Ultra Plot, and it's a an El Ra with a Pazu 7001 movement in it, which is extra thin, as you can see. All right, so um, it's now the, the entry level is stainless steel. Usually we think of a dress watch as uh, some kind of noble metal like gold or platinum. But um, this watch would work very well. I think for a dress watch, it could pass pretty easily as a dress watch. Uh, to me, it's more of what I would call an office watch. It's a kind of watch you could wear every day. It's uh, it's very clean. It's got uh, 12 Roman numerals around it. By and large, I'm not crazy about Roman numerals, but I really like the way uh, Blanc Pond did these. It's They're nicely separated, clear as a bell. And then the date window at 3 o'clock it's relatively small. I, I sort of like date windows a little bigger, but that one's nice and clear. The way they have that set up with the black against the white, it works out pretty well. Then it's got the central seconds to it. Uh, and on the back, it has a, an exhibition window, and you can see the movement, and it has that great big gold rotor uh, there for you. Now, the, the price of these for the entry-level plain vanilla Villeray is $9,800. That's the AD price, and you can get them for less uh, by looking around. I hated to, uh, last time I gave a price, and I wasn't, it was um, hard to find after that, so I'm going to keep my mouth shut this time about the uh, other prices you can find in secondary markets. But uh, I think you can find something right around in the $7,000 range for a condition zero uh, for one of these watches. Now, it's a 40 millimeter watch, which to me is an ideal size. And for some, it's too big or too small. But it's, to me, it's, it's sort of in that sweet zone between really big. Uh, this particular one is 42 millimeters, so you get an idea of, of how big uh, the Villeray Ultra, Ultra Plot is. Now, one of the more interesting things about Blanc Pond is its relationship with Frederic Piguet. Actually, at one time, uh, Frederic Piguet, which is a movement maker, uh, owned Blanc Pond. <laughs> so it was, they go back and forth. Um, 
both of both Frederick Piguet and Blancpain are owned by Swatch now. So they're they're and what Swatch did, and I think wisely, they made Frederick Piguet as part of Blancpain, and it was now their movements are named Blancpain, one thing or the other. Now this is the caliber eleven fifty one. And I'll tell you, I had the hardest time running down the um, frequency of this particular movement. I don't know why it's so hard. Usually you can go to watch base and they have the frequency right there, but I couldn't find the frequency anywhere. And so I had to look around and I finally found it as uh, it's 21600. Uh, In other words, it's a uh, three hertz movement. And which I prefer anyway, and the reason that they they use a three hertz for this eleven fifty one is so that they can have a, a hundred hour reserve on it. There is a version of this movement with a four hertz or twenty eight eight uh, twenty eight thousand eight hundred vibrations per hour movement, but it only has a seventy two hour reserve. So anyhow, uh, this is. Uh, one of the one of the interesting little things about it, but for some reason it's very hard to run that down. Now it's a very uh, thin movement, uh, 3.37 millimeters, 27 uh, millimeters uh, point 0.4 for the diameter. Now remember this particular one goes into a 40 millimeter case, so there's <laughs> the case isn't too tight, uh, but not too roomy uh, either. It's got uh, 28 jewels and uh, 212 components. Uh, on the front side, you can see the front where it has the date wheel. And uh, it's, it has nice, uh, it was the kind of, of um, well, it might be minimal, but it sort of would be minimal high horology kind of finishing. You can see the perlage on the front and on the back, it has the Geneva waist and then beneath you can see the perlage. Uh, nicely uh, beveled, and uh, I think it's a it's a really neat watch. I mean, for and for the entry level, and like I said, uh, there are a lot better prices where you if if you go shopping for it on this one. Okay, now the uh, last week when we reviewed uh, the uh, Breguet, before we did that, there was a. Uh, the watch of the week was uh, Don Haynes 50 Fathoms, uh, but that was not the entry level. That one was a tad more expensive than what we're going to, what's the entry level uh, for uh, for Blanc Pond for a sports watch. And it's the uh, 50 uh, Fathoms Bathy Scaff, and it's a satin brush titanium. And instead of, instead of a stainless steel, uh, I like that for a sports watch. Titanium's a very, very tough kind of thing. Uh, it, it has the uh, date window at uh, 4.30. Uh, very big, a uh, lot of good loom on the, uh, on the hands. Very fat, sort of rectangle hands with a pointer on the end. Almost looking like a, it might be a version of the syringe. On the back, um, you can see the automatic, uh, the move, it's automatic. As soon as you see the rotor, you know it's automatic. And um, we'll talk about that in a second. Now, uh, this one, I, I did look around. I was surprised at the AD price, which was 10500 And the uh, secondary uh, market, a place called Prestige Time, I found a condition zero. Uh, in the uh, Bathy scalp for 7980 That's about $2,000 uh, under what the what the AD price is. So again, this is another one that you can find some really good prices on. By the way, uh, on the Vila Ray, and I think on this, uh, on the Bathy scape, but more on the Vila Ray, I found England uh, and uh, the UK had much better prices, at least when you compare the, there's been a change in the value of the uh, uh, pound sterling 
And so the British prices look pretty good right now. In fact, they look excellent. And they were significantly less by about $2,000 or so less than the, um, the AD American price. Okay. Um, oh, by the way, too, on looking at the back, this comes with a NATO uh, strap, which is <laughs> was a lot of people looking for a 23 millimeter strap to replace a NATO strap. Um, on the right, <clears throat> in order to see the uh, movement uh, through the uh, through the exhibition window, they obviously took off the um, NATO strap and just used a regular. Uh, strap connected to the lugs. Okay, uh, let's take a look at the uh, the movement. Now, the movement here, uh, there wasn't a great deal of mystery in, in finding the frequency is 28800, which is 4 hertz movement on that. Um, the caliber uh, thickness is 5.65. Now, the reason I mention that, remember it was only like 3 something on the Vila Ray when they're talking about extra plot are ultra thin they really mean it uh, so this one's not huge but it's not it's not by any stretch of the imagination extra thin all right looking at the back you can get a good view of it without the rotor uh, this again was started off as a frederick piguet uh, 1315 and now it's the uh, blanc pond 1315. Uh, it's got a power reserve of 120 hours that's a good good five day uh, maybe even six day uh, reserve on this it's got the um, on the front you can see the date wheel and you've got a lot of perlage now when you compare the front and the back of these you don't see that much anything on the back I mean they're not even Geneva waves on the back of the caliber uh, 1315 that they have for the uh, 50 fathoms now this is the same 50 fathoms I'm sorry, this is the same movement that goes into the more expensive 50 fathoms. Uh, so the um, bathyscaph, while costing a good deal less than the the other <laughs> 50 fathoms, um, still has the same movement. It's a looks pretty good buy. 35 jewels and 227 components. All right, now... Uh, one of the things I wanted to do that uh, f from last time, when I talked about Breguet, everyone asked about, well, what about the um, the cost of maintenance or service? And so um, I, I got a hold of the uh, boutique, the uh, Blanc Pond Boutique in New York, and uh, the um, the assistant manager there is a really very helpful guy, uh, and he emailed me their entire uh, service. And so for these plain vanilla entry level Blanc Pond watches, and this is this is with a, a you know a gator or a, a gator or a uh, NATO strap. It costs more if it has a metal bracelet. It's just harder to take off and work with. Okay, well, it's 580 bucks, which isn't bad, really. I mean, you compare it's about a quarter of what I had to pay for my FP Jorn. Uh, so let's see what's involved. There's dismantling, cleaning, assembly, oiling, uh, the wash movement. That's sort of what really basic uh, service. Uh, repair, replacement of worn, damaged movement parts. Certain exceptions apply. Adjustment and regulation of the timekeeping to factory specifications, replacement of gaskets, special mineral or sapphire crystal and special and precious metal parts invoiced separately, restoration of water resistance to factory specification, uh, refur refurbishment of the case and bracelet to factory specifications, and final visual and technical uh, inspection. That's that's a lot of uh, I mean that's a that's a real nice uh, service and they do a lot to it rather than just take it apart and oil it and pop it back together again now like I said that 580 was the price just for the entry level and what they have they have a price list that goes up as you add things like a retrograde or large date time zone moon face is $650 
Not a great deal, but it is more. Chronographs are 730, and then they start having complications like a split uh, second or uh, Demi Fuso is 1180 and the Turbillons are 1880. I can tell you this, every place I've seen where they have every service price for Turbillon, they add a big hunk to it because that's a, it's a handful to service those things. And you need a person who understands how a Turbillon works. Okay, well, as always, I'm very interested in seeing what you have to say, what you think about uh, the Blanc Pond and the Vila Ray. And like I said, Vila Ray, I think that you can get them in gold and other kinds of precious metals if you want. But for an entry level high horology watch, it's, it's, it's a very reasonable one. And like I said, you can find them in the secondary markets for, I would say, in a neighborhood of around $7,000. You might be even able to do better than that. So, um, and also the uh, 50 Fathoms. Now, this is the 50 Fathoms is the Bathys scaff. It's not like the one that uh, Don Hain has that we looked at uh, last week. But it's, it's their basic entry-level watch. And it's made of titanium, and it comes with a NATO strap. So it's, it is entry-level. <laughs> and uh, But so is the price for a high horology watch like this. And the service is reasonable, so it's something that you might want to consider if you're looking to get into high horology. The in comments, always looking for comments. And a reminder: uh, August 31st is the last day that you can enter into the Grand Prix picks. If you'd like to see if you can pick the winners of the the Grand Prix d'Orologie de Genève, and so. I hope you enter that, and uh, this is always an invitation to subscribe if you'd like. And until Sunday, this is Bill Sanders with Watch Outside the Art and Science of Watch Collection.